Karen Roby here for ZDNet with Chris Matizjik. And Chris, you put an article together here that's really seemed to uh, strike a nerve with a lot of people. I think that's a good way to put it when it comes to travel as uh, some of us are getting back out there to travel, whether it, uh, you know, be by car and plane and a lot of questions surrounding what, what is safe and what isn't safe on an airplane. So um, talk us through this here a little bit. All eyes on United with this article. Um, concerning middle seats. What did you find here? Well, it, it, the, with United Airlines, of course, coincidences can happen at any point, but here were two, how can I put it, data points about United that seemed to occur together. One was that United announced it's relaunching its San Francisco to Shanghai flight. Now that's a flight that a lot of tech executives regularly take. Reportedly, Apple spent 150 million a year just, I mean, flying its executives back and forth on United. So, you know, this is sort of fairly relevant and important for the future of tech mankind, of course, and tech womankind as well. And so simultaneous with that, I thought, oh, that's sort of interesting. We don't even know how many tech executives will risk taking these flights. But simultaneously, United's head of PR, I'm sure he has a fancier title than that. He's Josh Ernest, ex-Obama administration, a PR person, he announced, look, the middle seats thing, you know, we're going to fill them all because keeping your middle seats empty is just a PR strategy. It's not a safety strategy. There is nothing about keeping middle seats empty that's actually going to help you feel safer or actually be safer on a plane. And I was curious about this because, of course, Delta Airlines and Southwest are saying they're keeping middle seats open at least for a while in order, they're smarter at marketing than United, I suspect, that, yes, of course you're going to feel good, but the question is whether you're actually going to be safer. So United earnest, earnestly said, well, wear a mask, keep social distancing when you can, but of course on planes you can't because the person in front of you is not six feet away, the person across the aisle isn't six feet away, which of course is true because all these airlines decided to fly everyone in horrible narrow body planes, made sure they squeezed the seats in, make sure the legroom was not big enough for the smallest dog, and you know, th they just want to make, they just want to make money, you know, when it comes down to it, they just want to make money. Yes, they've had lots of bailout funds. Yes, they'll fire lots of their employees. Yes, they're going to get some fabulous loans from the government too. But in the end, these are the sorts of organizations that bought back their shares, fed money to themselves and their shareholders. All they cared about, really, I suspect, is profit. Mm, you don't say. Well, sir, I do. I do. <laughs> They were not built uh, for for us to be distanced in any way, shape, or form. That is for sure. So, talk a little bit about some of the response that you uh, received on this, Chris, because I know you know so many people have read this article. Of course, commented back to you and had conversations from there. So, what was the general feeling? Well, well, you ne you never get everyone feeling the same thing, which I think is a really good thing. So, I had I had emails from people claiming to work for United who said to me, "Look." This is the only way we can survive as an airline. Of course, I wanted to respond, but this COVID, maybe if we can actually find a way to get through it, is the only way we can survive as a species. I didn't write back like that because, you know, you know, I'm more genteel, you know that kind. So um, this was interesting. So you certainly had people saying, you know, this is the only way the airline can survive. But I did also receive uh, one email in particular for a from an extremely well-known professor of statistics from MIT who said to me, you know what, the research shows currently that the truth is keeping middle seats empty makes you about twice as safe from COVID as, so it's one, it's one in 7,000 chance of catching COVID if the plane's full in, of course we're talking in coach because, right. and many tech executives are forced to fly in coach by their grisly little companies. Of course, some fly in business because they're terribly important and the company's terribly rich, but they're certainly not all. So it's a one in 7,000 chance um, if the middle seat's full. It's one in 14,000 if the middle seat is left empty. That is, of course, all this data is the best data that the statisticians can get right now. I mean, clearly, 
but we don't know we don't know enough about the virus even dr anthony fauci bless him says one of the things that shocks him is that between 20 and 40 percent of the cases are asymptomatic he's never seen a virus like this before having said that he and robert redfield from the cdc do not like the idea of middle seats being packed with people because let's face it during a flight especially if it's a long flight you're likely to want to eat so you are going to be taking that mask off you might just turn in the wrong direction there is some evidence of course that this virus is airborne yes airplanes have some airplanes anyway have excellent ventilation but still what would you prefer karen middle seat empty middle seat packed I mean, I, I would feel a whole lot better if it were empty, no doubt, as I would think most people have. But in there have been, I have not flown since, but I've had friends that have and said they were shocked to see that uh, even some didn't have a mask on. I don't know what the rules are on that or if it's by airline or, or how that all works. But uh, there's there's no question if we're going to keep moving forward through this, that we're going to have to find ways to, uh, you know, keep to ourselves as much as we can. But man, on an airplane, it just almost seems nearly impossible. It does seem nearly impossible, but any gesture an airline can make to, yeah. to at least mitigate. And if it's true that the statistics show that it is just a little bit safer, even if it's just a little bit safer, even if it protects you from catching COVID, and who knows, I think there's a 1% chance you can die from it. So you, you don't really want to go that far. And of course, I'm sure that the airlines won't feel liable in the slightest if if someone happens to to catch covid on one of their, their extremely lovely serviced flights I, it's look, it's you know that the motivation is money you it, it's 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 very hard to get beyond that the motivation is money and unfortunately for united this is the airline that dragged the passenger off the plane his face blooded his teeth smashed out and and there was a settlement afterwards. So they've tried to rebuild their corporate image and have ha done that with some success. Yeah. To come out and boldly say, you know what, this social distancing thing on planes, don't be silly. It's, uh, no, I think may have at least slightly a long-term effect in terms of their brand. Clearly they don't care. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd say definitely. Uh, and, and it's just interesting to see how different companies are handling this and their response, uh, Chris. But and, and one last question I will have for you, you know, in terms of the guys and gals that are actually flying these planes, any voice for those pilots at all? Well, American Airlines pilots, of course, have a splendid solution, which is the government should buy all the middle seats. So that way, of course, American Airlines can still make the profits it wants to make. Okay. But it won't be, you know, it, it risking passengers' anger and health and what have you even more. So that, that's their idea. Uh, I can imagine some people might not think it's the finest idea on earth. However, you know, especially as these airlines are getting a lot of government money right now. They're, they're, they're being bailed out to a fairly handsome degree. So we'll see what happens. It's, you know, personally, I've not got on a flight yet. Um, and the airlines do say that if the flight's going to be full, they'll let you know so you can change your flight. Well, but there aren't that many flights around right now, relatively speaking. So it, uh, yeah. you know, I'll, keep, I'll keep away from a while and, you know, maybe Southwest and Delta if I have to. Yes, I, I hear you on that. <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, uh, we're glad that everyone's uh, reading this article, sharing it, talking about it, because it is it's interesting and it's something to, you know, to really ponder if you if you do plan on getting out or you're one of those execs that has to that has to take a flight and and uh, get to work in that way so uh, all right well guys thanks for watching today again um, make sure you read all of chris's articles on zdnet bye-bye everybody